The Aztec is a, is a fascinating uh, case because it was the original, if you will, uh, crash flying saucer story. And it surfaced uh, it first in 1949 in, in uh, columns written by Frank uh, Scully in, in the, the Daily Variety. It ultimately led to a best-selling book that Scully wrote, and uh, yeah, I think it sold something on the order of 60,000 copies in 1950 in hardcover, and then it went on to 12 editions overseas, and on and on and on. I mean, it was remarkable how successful it was. It's obvious he struck some kind of real chord. It was also total nonsense, and, and Scully was either a, one of these fellows who knew enough, uh, knew enough not to ask uh, questions he didn't want to hear the answers to, or he was genuinely duped uh, by a fellow named Silas Newton and a sidekick of his named Leo Gebauer, who became known as Dr. G in Scully's book. Essentially, these two guys were con men who uh, were in the process of trying to peddle a doodle bug, which is a, an oil and gas industry tag for a device that will find oil and gas, but of course doesn't. Uh, and in his case, it was a machine that not only found oil and gas, but gold and water and pretty much anything that the uh, mark was interested in finding. And uh, on top of that, Gebauer had invented something similar, which also supposedly could uh, assess the health of a person. So this was sort of an all-in-one, do-it-all kind of thing. But what they did, which was unusual uh, and made their little bit unique, uh, in the, was that they, they claimed that their doodle bug was better than anybody else's because it was using technology that had been taken from the flying saucer that allegedly crashed near Aztec. And therefore, obviously, it was far superior. Uh, Dr. G, our friend Gebauer, was supposedly a magnetics expert who was one of those called in by the Air Force when the saucer was tracked in, in, to ground near Aztec. Uh, where it floated to ground, not actually crashed, and uh, presumably disabled by a high-powered radar somewhere nearby. That was such was the claim. Anyhow, the whole thing was a total con job, and uh, it was quickly recognized as such, and, and then really exposed in detail in 1952 by uh, J. P. Kahn, who was an investigative reporter. I think he had, was with the San Francisco Examiner, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he did a, a four or five-month investigation in detail, including. Uh, manag managing to con the con man out of a, uh, a, an example or a sample of the mysterious metal that the saucer was made out of. It turned out to be the sort of stuff that you made pots and pans out of, actually. But, you know, he was a very, very, very sharp reporter who did a really good job. And uh, True Magazine published his article in 1952 exposing these guys. And this led to the district attorney in, um, in Denver, Colorado, prosecuting Newton and Gebauer uh, for fraud and various other sorts of associated charges. Anyway, they were convicted in December of 1952. And uh, basically the whole notion of crash flying saucers uh, went away. And people who take flying saucers, UFOs, seriously for decades wouldn't touch anything like that with a 10-foot pole until Roswell came along.